right, well, we packed up Doc. Uh, <laughs> I normally don't review individual games in a series. I feel like this one absolutely deserves it. First of all, the amount of time that I spent playing and preparing for it, whatever. But also, putting it all the way over there. Um, I think that there are some key differences between this and now, to be fair, I haven't played any of what I would call the mainline OCS games, right? Those all being situated on the East Front, that's what it was designed for at sort of the single operation level, right? And so it's kind of hard for me to do more than just project what I think those would be like and why this series is so popular and where this particular game, uh, the first edition of DAC at least, fails. I don't think enough's been done in the second uh, edition to change some of the core problems. They made some cosmetic changes that are important. Um, but... <laughs> And let's get to that to begin with. Components, look, <laughs> if you're getting into an OCS game, you kind of know what the components are going to be. There's a lot of maps. There's five maps. Uh, you probably want to play with a more modern rule set. I chose to do so because it doesn't make a lot of sense, you know, to not take advantage of the things that were learned over the decades <laughs> of play of OCS and the things that were changed to, to improve it. Uh, some of them smooth out and simplify play a little bit. Um, some of them improve, you know, accuracy. Uh, there are still issues with the system in its core. Uh, I, think, I think one can point those out and, and see them. Um, and no real easy fixes that are obvious, but, you know, there are attempts around the edges with some of the optional rules, with some of the, uh, yeah, we decided not, optional rules in this are so weird, because, and, and yeah, uh, the way Dean handled them was, hey, these might be, these are candidates for the next edition of the rules, you know? <laughs> Let's see how they work, and let's get feedback from them. So it's kind of a funny feeling uh, where it's like, yeah, here's an optional rule, but it may become part of the standard rule set at some point. It's not really a... Um, it's, not, it's not simply a let's make the game more complex or whatever... Uh, or, or just taste type of things. And a lot of the optional rules kind of fall off as they don't get incorporated. But one of them that kind of didn't was this idea of, uh, of, of being able to use artillery a little better uh, on a defensive basis without requiring to use reserve markers to, um, to utilize them. But anyway... Uh, why, why am I there? Um, yeah, I, what I wanted to catch on to, when I, as soon as I mentioned Dean's name, I, unfortunately, uh, he died relatively recently. It was a, a fast decline from everything that I've seen. And, you know, probably... I don't know if that's better or worse, you know? <laughs> it's like... Uh, it wasn't an absolute shock, but and I, I, my first girlfriend had a, had a similar situation where her mother, you know, found out she had cancer and within three months was dead. So, you know. Um, and that's a, you know, it's a, it's, a real, it's a real shame to the hobby, but in, in, a, in a sense... You can look back on his life and just say, wow, you know, he did a hell of a lot for us and led, at least from an external point of view, what seems like a really, really good life. And I don't think 
you know, I, I don't think you can... There's nothing to feel sorry for, is I guess what I'm saying. Uh, I, you know, we're all going to die, and given the circumstances, I don't know if it was that bad a, a, a situation. It gave, you know, it gives some time to prepare for it, to realize it's on coming quickly, but not a long lingering uh, uh, misery. I, I don't know. I mean, you know, it always sucks, right? Uh, anyway, moving, moving on. Uh, um, I think the one thing with the components, so there's a couple of component choices that are kind of iffy. The first one, and this has definitely got changed in DAC 2, is the German units are colored almost the same color as some of the Commonwealth units to the extent where I had trouble uh, distinguishing the two. They get switched to gray in DAC 2. Uh, it was just, it was a mistake to try to match uniform uh, quality, uh, color patient. Otherwise, the counters are, you know, early gamers quality counters, really, really good. Uh, the white core type counters, they're a pain in the ass to clip. Like, I can't use scissors to do it. I have to use nail clippers or you know something a little sturdier, which is fine. Um, only disadvantage, glossy counters on a glossy map. I've never been a fan of that. Um, there's a lot of map, five maps. You have an opportunity to reduce that either in scenarios where not all maps are needed or even in the grand campaign if you absolutely need to there's a little substitute for one of the maps that gets you down to four maps and a little add-on normal charts and tables what i found kind of funny is that the quality of the paper of the rules while still while very good back then and it was so good that like it got me excited like I was really happy about gamers because they put out, you know, games with kind of a, a thicker stock of paper, just better than most games tended to put out. Uh, reminiscent of an earlier era. But uh, what's really strange is the newer stuff for the OCS has an even thicker, heavier quality paper, which is just amazing. Like, everybody else is moving towards this, like, dissolvable paper. That's horrible shit. Um, you have the rules split among many things. Obviously, first the series rules and whatever. Uh, and then, but you have three different volumes of addenda uh, uh, of exclusive rules and charts. Um, this is basically a charts and tables book, so don't don't look at it too badly in terms of all uh, three of them. <laughs> it's only two, <laughs> which is one more than most games will have. Uh, this has a number of helpful things, well, and necessary things, like the weather chart for the game, the terrain effects chart, uh, uh, unit rebuilding, random events, and, but then it also has some things that are more play aids. You don't absolutely need, you may need the AEP to AEP air distance, uh, but you do not need the road distance chart to play the game, but good luck. <laughs> uh, the amount of supplies you're transporting in this game makes it impossible to cope with. I mean, that just smooths things out a great deal. It ain't enough, but a great deal. Um, you have specific rules and do, 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 a whole lot of them. And then a, uh, all the scenarios are in here as well. And let me see this one. Yeah. This one contains a bunch of, it, it contains the Grand Campaign and a couple of other scenarios. But it also contains the designer's notes, all the information there. Um, bibliography information, uh, another copy of the random events tables for some reason. But 
the orders of arrival, and then historical withdrawals and returns. Uh, I found the orders of arrival chart to be kind of painful. It, uh, it, it tended to, um, I, I don't know. So one of the core problems is in a campaign of this length, units got assigned to different commands. Um, they got significant changes to how they were composed, sometimes to the actual designation of the type of unit being changed. Certainly, uh, quality levels changed throughout. So, like, the 7th Armored is kind of godlike, but only until they take their first losses. And then, yeah, they become okay. I, I mean, they're good, but they're not godlike, right? <laughs> After that. Um, and that's really an attempt to, like, represent just how fucking amazing they actually did historically. Uh, what this means is a lot of component, uh, a lot of uh, military elements being withdrawn, uh, replaced. A lot of effort has to go into that, uh, into that order of appearance chart to let you know what needs to be done. And some of it can be very painful to cope with. Add to that the fact that the actual unit designations, and some recently noticed this, noted this on Gamers Games, are really small print. I don't find them all that particularly small compared to like SPI in the era that I was in it and whatnot. So, I, you know, it may be that us older gamers are getting more used to modern games that are being devised for our poor eyes. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was hard. It was hard. But I have trouble sometimes with other, with games from a slightly earlier period. So, you know, whatever. <laughs> uh, but definitely there's not a lot of room on the counters for information. And, you know, you, you have to make the point sizes smaller and whatnot in order to make up for uh, be, having to fit as much information as OCS does on a counter. And they make a lot of, uh, a lot of juggling acts uh, to handle that. And then, oh, yeah. So on the back of this, there's this allied uh, withdrawal and return table. You know, I knew about it when I read the rules. There's nothing in the game that points you to when you have to roll on this or anything like that. The sequence of play is just the core OCS sequence of play. There's <sighs> What would be really helpful is a cheat sheet sequence of play that sends you to do the things that are game specific here. So like, I forgot to do this for a long period of time. I, and I, I, you know, I could make my own. There's no question about that. But every time I found something, I'm like, oh, well, now that I know it, it's kind of emblazoned in my head. And, and my poor brain is like, okay, I won't make that mistake again. You've cussed me out enough. Um, there's also a hell of a lot of charts and tables on each of the maps. And again, when you're first approaching the campaign or whatever, it's hard to remember all the different little places you have to look and all the little things you have to do. Um, eventually, after you've fucked up enough, you start to get used to, uh, you know, the things that you fucked up. But in my case, that was at a point at which, uh, you know, the... Uh, I'm just checking my battery power. The, the Italians were going to hold not just Tobruk, but Bardia and Solom as well, uh, which put the situation into something pretty damn difficult for, uh, for, the, uh, for the Commonwealth to hold on. Um, and yeah. <laughs> Um, 
Another issue with the map is that, and this may not be the best choice of maps to do it, let's take map C as an example, and I went over this. Everything that you're seeing here, I went over with. Well, first of all, the top portion of the map is all water and charts. Not bad, but you know, hey. Uh, all the action happens up here in the coastal area. And basically, two thirds of the map is essentially unused space. Now, could you use it? I guess. Could something happen there? Historically, stuff did happen down there, but not much. And functionally, the game makes it really, really unimportant to do anything in the South at all. Um, that southern territory is covered in games like Desert Fox, which have strict victory point, uh, you know, strict victory conditions based on points, and there are points that are down there. So, you know, you kind of have to go through some effort to take those things, even though, you know, in terms of the campaign itself, they do you not one whit of good. Here, the victory conditions are, hey, look at the map, figure out who won. They, honestly, they are for the grand campaign. That may be the most reasonable, but it gives me absolutely no incentive to go down and do anything that's not going to aid the campaign as a whole. Let's go to the next thing. This is again based on the length of time that the game takes more than anything else. Um, most OCS games, most of those sort of, like I say, the mainline Eastern Front type ones operate within a single year, probably less, focusing on one major operation or an operation and, you know, its counter move or whatever. <coughs> At least that's my, my understanding of it. Otherwise, why would they need so many, <laughs> you know, for the East Front? By doing that, they limit the scope of the situation and to, to a period when a fair amount of stuff is always going on. There might be a significant amount of turns where not much is happening, but in this game, because of the nature of the campaign and the length of, of, of time spent playing it, if you play the campaign game, you're going to have humongous periods of downtime for anything that is even remotely historical. But it's not absolute downtime, right? So, and, and here's the problem. The OCS goes into such detail with the supplies that you're spending turn after turn basically just moving supplies, moving reinforcements, shit like that. I think that some sort of substitute using a concept like this, almost a replacement or duplicate of the map, only to handle broad movements of supplies, of reinforcements, whatever, would be very helpful. Uh, something that abstracts away a lot of the details so that you're not trucking supply points around uh, consistent, constantly, counting out that 45 movement points on, on the roads times three because road is third movement. You, well, the primary roads are third movement usually, and it all gets mutated by the weather and everything. I think that a really, really clever design that is similar to other mechanism within the game. These little boxes here that give you transit from Tripoli to uh, Alagila. Uh, would be possible. Something that's calculated out, that works fine, it may take the weather concerns into, in, 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 into uh, consideration. You need the entire five maps, well, four of the five at least, 
to represent all the territory that the campaign actually was fought over. But you don't need to be playing on all of them at all the time. I think that's one key about the campaign. Uh, you're still going to have a lot of downtime. You're still going to be shifting materials around a lot of the time. But it's going to be an easier burden uh, for how you do that. Now, another option, and one that doesn't require anything clever to be done, is you can play this just for the scenarios. And that's kind of an interesting choice. If you think about the scenarios, again, for the length of time that things operate, what you have in this, in, in the North Africa campaign, is a significant number of operations or times of interest that are represented in each of the scenarios. Now, I've seen some, some statements that the scenarios aren't all that good, um, but they do give you something particularly interesting, which is an introduction to a, a way to play the OCS with, rel with a, a significant amount of relatively small operations um, that you can do one after the other, not feeding into each other, not any kind of campaign or whatever, but where you can play a number of these scenarios which are really each standalone operations. They're not smaller slices, which is kind of the thing, like the Big East Front ones, you're kind of slicing something that is cohesive in terms of the operation. Of course, you're slicing the campaign, which is cohesive, but let's, let's leave that aside. You're slicing something that's relatively cohesive, and there's action going on throughout it, usually. I'm guessing. Again, I'm just making a guess based on how popular the series is and what I know from the games I've played of it. Uh, And that, you know, feels really, really limiting. Like the idea of taking some little segment of a battle. You know, it's like, I don't know, it's like fighting out little round top, you know. <laughs> or, uh, you know, just the attack on either Culp's or Cemetery Hill, but not both together. Yeah, it's just, it's like... Wow, there's a lot going on right next to you or just before and just after that I really don't feel like, you know, you're kind of starting in the middle of things or ending in the middle of things and it just doesn't, it's, it's not satisfying to me. Same kind of way that, you know, uh, the geomorphic uh, skirmish level games like uh, Panzer Blitz and Squad Leader and whatnot have uh, is not satisfying. You know, it's like, okay, look, if all I'm dealing with is an actual skirmish, fine. But if I'm like in the middle of the Battle of the Bulge and all I'm dealing with is a few guys trying to hold a village or something, wow, I want to know what the hell's going on on the, uh, on the surrounding areas. I want to know what happened before and after. I, I, I want the, a bigger picture, you know. It's just personal taste. But I think that applies to a lot of people. Well, this gives you something where each of the scenarios presented is, I believe, more distinct and uh, more tightly, you know, more tightly defined. It's not like some slice out of, you know, oh, well, this is where the most interesting part happens, or this is the beginning, you know. Uh, for me, that's not satisfying. For me, I wanted something that covered the whole campaign. And I thought this would be a, the playable thing that covers the whole campaign in the right level of detail, focusing on the land stuff, Air is very abstracted here, and it's not. But, you know, something that gives me the kind of picture that Campaign North Africa would give me, but be playable. Well, it's not. 
I think you're better off if that's what you're looking for. Uh, at least in my opinion, it's not. Is it actually playable? Yes, but you're schlepping materials around so much of the time. And then also I found um, something fucked up happens when, when you get to a static position close to, the, uh, close to the allied source of supply, where basically <coughs> they're going to be able to use their artillery. Um, and the Axis is not. Now, the Axis has ridiculous amounts of artillery, but can't afford to use it. The Commonwealth has a reasonable... Uh, things are about equal when the Italians first invade, or, or the Commonwealth isn't that far behind. But at the period of the game that I got to, the Commonwealth has almost no artillery. A lot of it's embedded in, in, in their uh, uh, brigades. But they still don't have a hell of a lot. And it ends up, uh, but it ends up that they can do a lot more with almost no artillery than the Axis can with their huge quantities, just because of supplies. Is that historically accurate? I, I mean, it must be, right? You know? <laughs> the only question is, why the fuck are the Axis sending so much artillery <laughs> to, to this theater? Um, yeah, OCS is not... It's not friendly to artillery. Artillery is incredibly effective, but also almost impossible to feed. Um, so yeah, I, I feel like uh, I feel like Dak was not, you know, it, it's sad because this was this was the game that I wanted most out of the whole OCS. This was the campaign I most wanted to play. All the others, I was kind of like, huh, I kind of enjoyed the OCS. Could it make me like playing Big East Front World War II stuff? And then even scarier, uh, the West Front stuff? Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm, really not, I'm really not at all sure that I'll ever get to that. Uh, and will I get to the East Front? I don't know. I'm going to try. Um, but, yeah, this was the thing that I thought would win me over fully to the OCS in terms of wanting to be able, you know, be, being a complete, I don't know, fanboy of the system. Well, unfortunately, it doesn't, it, it doesn't work. It's too big a time span, too big a scope for a system that was designed to handle individual operations. There's a lot of special rules going on in DAC. A lot of them which kind of script the game in, 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 in a number of different ways. Some of the, the unit removals, shit like that. They really kind of force you into a, you, you, look, at the board, you look at the situation that you're in and you might say, yeah, that just doesn't make sense that this would be happening under this condition. Knowing why the counters are being switched, knowing what's going on and whatever. Um, on top of that, you don't have any opportunity as you do in Desert Fox. I don't remember in Africa. Um, you don't have any opportunity to just say, to just say no to Churchill about like unit withdrawals or anything like that. Um, because Desert Fox works on a victory point system, they can apply a penalty. If you choose to devote resources into the North Africa campaign rather than sending them to Greece and the Near East and, uh, <laughs> you know, the Far East and whatnot, if you don't use these troops in other theaters, there's going to be a cost in those other theaters. And that can just be applied. And the truth of the matter is, you could be losing this campaign fully, and this campaign might be more important than some of those others by, uh, by complying with the withdrawals that you're being asked to make, or, or being required to make. In this system, you're just required to make them. Yeah, you got a little bit of uh, can-kicking capability, which I didn't take advantage of, because it's just too fucking confusing. Um, like, 
I would have to come up with some other means, some means that's not present in the game of indicating information uh, of what needs to be withdrawn and how much time I have to do it. It wouldn't be too hard. I could put a counter, a numerical counter in the withdrawal box uh, that would indicate what I need, need to do. Um, you also have units sometimes bouncing back and forth uh, and all kind of crap like that. Uh, one final thing that I had as kind of a thought about this, I think, we'll, and I've expressed this in, in my uh, in my playthrough, but I think that this game was held off. It wasn't the first game that was put out. And I don't know what it was, fourth something? Game number five. That's a long time to wait on what arguably might have been the most popular subject matter for a World War II game, you know? Yeah, sure. Barbarossa's up there, and B Battle of the Bulge is up there. Uh, those are, those are your, your other alternatives to, to put up there I mean, for, for European theater. I don't know what, you know, I don't know what to do with the East, you know, with, with, with the Eastern theater because uh, the Far East, because that's naval warfare, you know, mainly. <coughs> there, there's not a hell of a lot, you know, uh, and, and they did Berman, and I enjoyed that. Um, but there's not a hell of a lot that a, a, a game can, uh, focusing on the ground campaigns is going to be able to cover nicely. And Burma was kind of long, too. Uh, but Burma was sort of small-scale fighting everywhere. It didn't have the tendency to find uh, major breakthroughs, large movements of territory, and then hitting a static line, which I, I think this kind of, you know, I mean, historically, it's what happened. So. Um, but I think had, first of all, there were a lot of special rules that were needed to make the OCS work for this whole, whole lengthy campaign. But secondly, the campaign itself, I'm sure they were playing prototypes of it, you know, from early on in, in the system design. The campaign itself is just not that suitable to the system. With the changes that uh, I, you know, I suggested, make that work. I don't know. Maybe, maybe they would certainly make it easier. You know, it, it would be another step forward to abstract away most of the tedious work of moving supplies and and reinforcements um, by counting out their full movement points or using the road movement chart. But you got to be careful with that. Here, here was another thing. Supplies are so limited that all my motorized stuff, all my semi-motorized stuff, like motorized infantry and stuff like that, I would get, have them get out and push their trucks rather than drive because uh, I need the supplies too much, at least with the axes. With the Commonwealth, yeah, they could... They could uh, um, fully motorized mechanized units yeah I just had to uh, you know you have to bite the bullet and move them up but I left a lot of them just stranded in the desert because they weren't worth bringing up you know <laughs> they're just cannon fodder when it comes down to it they don't really add much low strength point low quality uh, and they use fuel well fuck that man <laughs> so that stuff just got abandoned probably most of it was meant to be killed uh, during Operation Compass and afterwards. Anyway. Ooh. Certain level of disappointment with what I got out of it. I was hoping to get something that pleased me more or pleased me in a deeper way than like either Africa did. A Africa had its problems. Again, I don't know if Africa too fixed those, uh, but Africa had its problems, but it came close. Um, or Desert Fox, which I've got my iffy 
I've got my concerns about the supply system for Desert Fox, but I think Desert Fox is the is still the pinnacle for me of handling the whole campaign. <coughs> um, but yeah, this is uh, this was disappointing in that that sort of way. I still like it. I just don't think I don't think it it's a great fit. Uh, but at the same time, I'm saddened having cleaned it up and whatnot. You know, it's it's like a a relationship. You know, that, that you form when you're playing a game for months. You know, <laughs> I mean, think about a personal relationship that lasts that long. You know, that you see each other a few hours a day or whatever. And then it's coming to the end because it's just not working out. Yeah, you feel some pain and, and, and some, some uh, it's just kind of weird, you know? And it's worse because I'm quitting it rather than it playing out its course. There's something, something that feels right when I finish a game uh, that's played, played out completely. I've got like this mixture of yeah, I kind of don't want to see it go, um, but it's time, you know? It's stuck around too long. This, I don't feel that, because I had to say, yeah, you know, there's stuff I would have liked to have seen at the end, but it just got, it, it got too tedious, and I'm not, act, act, I'm not actually sure that either side, because the, the Axis managed to push the Commonwealth to the Nile, I'm not sure that either side could have managed the Nile crossing within the scope of the game. Uh, this goes to late 42. My, my knowledge of the history isn't very good. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to think what Torch was and whatnot, but you know, there's a point where if you didn't succeed and take you know, Alexander and Suez and beyond. Campaign's over, man, you know, uh, for the Axis. And for the Commonwealth, it's just a matter of, well, you know, is it the Eighth Army that does the work or is it the American landings that force the, the Germans back? And, yeah. <laughs> Historically, I believe it was sort of a combination. The Eighth Army was breaking through and the landings made it obvious that, like, yeah, it's over anyway. It would have been over anyway. It didn't matter. Anyway. Uh, it's odd to do, to do uh, a review of something um, within a series of this nature. I just feel like this particular one demanded it because it, it is iconic in my mind. You know, we'll, we'll see. We'll see if I, I, I get to others, whether or not I do reviews on them. But, yeah. Up it goes. <laughs>